Right, David Kahn here with another question from your Hasten Harris Math SL textbook. This is chapter 1E, question 4, part C. In this question, we're trying to draw a sine diagram for this expression. Now, a sine diagram basically tells you whether or not the expression is going to be positive or negative. Now, the expression can only change sign when a couple of things happen. It can only change sign from positive to negative or negative to positive when there's a zero, when the expression crosses zero. It can also only change sign if there's a discontinuity, like a vertical asymptote. So if we sketch a graph, what I'm talking about here are basically ways in which the function can cross the x-axis. Now I'm going to sketch a graph. It's not necessarily this graph. It's just a random graph. Here's part of the graph. This part of the graph is positive. It's on the positive half of the Cartesian plane. It's going to become negative. It's on the negative part now. And it did so by crossing the x-axis at what we call a zero. At this point, it had a value of zero. You can't get to the other side without crossing zero. So that's going to be the key point we're going to look for. We're going to look for zeros. But there's a tricky way it can get there. It can go all the way around behind. It can keep going down and show up over here. We call this a vertical asymptote. So it went from negative to positive, not by going across zero, but kind of like showing up on the other side of infinity. So those are the two ways that we can cross from the positive to the negative side of the Cartesian plane. We can go across at a zero, or we can go across at a vertical asymptote. So what we're going to do is, in this expression, we're going to look to see if there are any zeros and if there are any vertical asymptotes. And those are going to be the key points to help us determine where the graph is positive, where the graph is negative, and where it's positive again. But keep in mind, again, this is just a sketch of a random function. That's not the one that we're interested in. So to find the one that we're interested in, we'll look for zeros. How can this function evaluate to zero? Well, it could if the numerator were 0. So we're going to let 2x plus 3 be 0 to find when what value of x makes the whole function 0. To solve this, we'll subtract 3 to the other side and divide by 2. It happens when x is negative 1.5. If x is negative 1.5, the top is 0, and we get 0. How do we get a vertical asymptote? We get a vertical asymptote when we divide by 0. So we're going to look at the denominator and find what value of x makes the denominator 0. So when is 4 take x equal to 0? Let's subtract the 4 to the other side and multiply by negative 1. It happens when x is 4. So the, so the relationship can only change from positive to negative or negative to positive at these values of x, negative 1.5 and 4. So that's going to help us make our um, sine diagram. For the sine diagram, we don't need the whole Cartesian plane. We're not interested in the value of the relationship, just whether it's positive or negative. And we know that the key points are when x is, is our x-axis, when x is negative 1.5, and when x is 4. We want to know, is the function up here positive? Is it down here negative? So to determine that, we'll just test a value. We'll test a value that's somewhere in this region. Let's test 2. We need a value in here. What's a nice value between negative 1.5 and 4? How about 0? And we need a number in this region over here, a number greater than 4. How about 5? It doesn't really matter as long as you have one number in each region. All right, let's find out if the expression is positive or negative in each one of these regions. Uh, we just need a reminder. The function is 2x plus 3 over 4 take x. So what we're doing here is we're evaluating the function 2x plus 3 over 4 take x. And we're evaluating it at these three points. So the first point, point 2, we get 2x plus 3 
over 4 take x. But x is 2. Is this positive? Is this negative? We just have to evaluate it. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3 over 4 take 2. I've just noticed I've made a pretty important mistake here. Take a look at this number line. There's something majorly wrong with it. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 1.5, negative 2. And maybe you saw me make that mistake. It should be negative 2. So 2 times negative 2 would be negative 4. And 4 take negative 2 would be 4 plus 2. All right. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1 over 6. I'm not actually interested in the fact that the relationship works out to, ne to negative 1 over 6. I'm not interested in the value. I'm just interested in the sign. It's a negative number. So what that means is that in this region, the relationship works out to be a negative value. Now, it's not safe to assume that as we cross negative 1.5, it's going to become positive. It might, it might not. It might stay negative. So what we have to do is we have to test a value in this region, and we chose 0. So let's test 0. That's 2x plus 3 over 4 take x. And x is 0. This one's not too bad. 2 times 0 is 0, leaving 3 and 4. They're both positive, so the result turns out to be positive. So the function's on the negative side of the x-axis, then it's on the positive side, and now the question is, is it going to stay positive or go negative again? We need to test it one more time. So that's 2x plus 3 over 4 take x. We're testing 5. So that's 10 plus 3 over 4 take 5. That's 13 over negative 1. And that is going to work out to be a negative value. So we have here then is our sign diagram. These bits here aren't necessary. You don't need to report them in your sign diagram. But the blue bits are. Because those are your regions which separate the negative portions from the positive portions.